strange lights, cryptic transmissions, and unidentified objects. Are these supernatural phenomena in space? Welcome to Haunted Road Media. I'm author and ghost story and Mike Ricksecker. Explore the connected universe with us. We've been researching and exploring plenty of supernatural phenomena and paranormal activity around the world. But what about outside the planet Earth and out in the universe? What kind of supernatural mysteries exist in the cosmos? Here are a handful of stories that make you wonder. In July 1984, Russian cosmonauts witnessed something that has become known as the Angels in Space. Aboard the Soviet space station Soyuz 7, three cosmonauts began noticing a strange orange light outside their spacecraft. It grew and grew in brightness, and the crew became mesmerized as it seeped through the walls of the space station. The orange light grew so bright at one point that it actually began blinding the crew. They looked out the exterior windows looking for fire or damage to the craft, but they were stunned at what they saw. Seven figures hovered outside, their faces and body humanoid in appearance, with wings and halos. The crew stood transfixed as these beings hovered outside and kept pace with the orbiting craft for nearly 10 minutes before they disappeared. Twelve days later, the crew was joined by three more cosmonauts from Soyuz T-12. Shortly after the new crew members boarded the Soyuz 7, the angelic beings returned, once again bathing the space station in orange light. Looking out the windows of the station again, the cosmonauts were again amazed and reported that the beings were massive in stature, about the size of airliners. While some skeptics have chalked up these incidents to hallucinations from their extended time in space, these cosmonauts insisted that they saw large smiling angels at the space station. Who or what these beings were is still unknown. In August 1977, the Big Ear Radio Telescope at The Ohio State University picked up a strange radio transmission from deep space that lasted 72 seconds and is still a mystery to this day. It was louder and more intense than anything else in the background sky that night and was dubbed the WOW signal when astronomer Jerry Amon wrote the word WOW in red ink on the computer printout of the signal. At that time, the Big Ear, which has since been decommissioned, was part of the SETI program searching for extraterrestrial life, and it was the only time they ever captured such a signal while it was in operation. Was this a deep space transmission from ETs? Was it some sort of passing planetary object? Or was it something else supernatural in nature? To this day, it's still unknown, although a paper published by an astronomer in 2017 stated the signal was likely caused by comets. While many in the scientific community have accepted the comet idea as plausible, scores of other astronomers are still skeptical since not all the data lines up precisely. They maintain that all possibilities, whether extraterrestrial or supernatural, remain on the board. Achille and Giovanni Giudica Cordelia were brothers and amateur radio operators who believed they intercepted radio transmissions of lost Soviet cosmonauts in the 1960s. At first, they intercepted the radio transmissions of Sputnik 1 and 2 in 1957 and Explorer 1 in 1958. But things began to change for the brothers in 1960 when they captured a transmission in Morse code signaling SOS. The strange thing about this transmission was that it was moving away from Earth. It's hard for us to understand the gravity of this possible event these days since we're quite accustomed now to launching humans into space. But at that point, the space race was in high gear and no human had yet reached beyond the stratosphere. Yet, the brothers had captured an SOS call catapulting out further and further into space. Was this a manned mission to orbit the Earth that had gone terribly wrong? If there are any human ghosts in space, this could be the first. About two months later, in February 1961, the brothers picked up a transmission from space that sounded like the dying breaths of an unconscious man, although it's not believed to be the same person that had sent out the SOS distress code. Even more haunting was a transmission the brothers intercepted in early 1963 that sounds like a Soviet female cosmonaut being incinerated in an attempted re-entry from spaceflight. Although it's unknown precisely what happened, is believed she was trying to return to Earth due to dwindling air supplies. I've included an audio sample of the transmission here, but 
please be advised that this clip is not only creepy, but many find it disturbing. So some may want to skip it. Was this really the distress signal of a lost cosmonaut? Or perhaps something even more bizarre, perhaps even supernatural? I won't ignore the fact that the work of the Judica Cordelia brothers has remained highly controversial and the Russian government has always denied its validity. However, the brothers have always maintained that their findings are authentic. One brother maintaining this into his 80s and the other to his grave. Did Buzz Aldrin really see something unusual while he was in space? Many people like to cite Aldrin as having admitted to seeing extraterrestrials on the Apollo 11 mission to the moon, and this has become a lightning rod topic for him. His official PR maintains that what he may have seen was possibly one of the panels from the spacecraft, possibly reflecting light from the sun, so he can't be sure. Thus, what he saw is still unidentified to this day, although not necessarily extraterrestrial. An interesting comment he did make about 10 years ago, which set off another highly charged conversation, was when he specifically pointed out the existence of a massive monolith on the Mars moon of Phobos. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? He later said it was the universe who put the large monolith there. But within the universe, in the words of the late Dr. Hans Solzer, nothing in the universe is supernatural. Everything that's bizarre and strange is quite natural. So almost anything could have put the monolith on Phobos. These are just a handful of strange tales from outside our planet. And for more stories about strange supernatural phenomena, please check out our other videos off to the side. I'm Mike Ricksecker. Until next time. Thank you.